in the summer, when uh, you were invited to do some interviews at the uh, Imrama Festival, which was an amazing event. And I went along there and, and watched you doing those interviews and you met some remarkable people and spent time with them. And w one of them was a, a guy called Turtle Bunbury, who, beautiful man, beautiful man. And uh, you and he created some sort of friendship and you're sitting there with his latest book on your lap. Tell the listeners about Turtle Bunbury and his books. Yeah, and we, and we mentioned just earlier on in the programme about um, the Vanishing Ireland project briefly, which was Turtle Bunbury's. But Turtle is an amazing historian, an Irish historian, and his, his books, um, also a glorious madness. Um, but this latest book, and I was interested because when I interviewed him there during the summer, he was talking about this um, book coming out, 1847. It's a big a, book, isn't it? It's huge, a chronicle of genius, generosity and savagery. So it, it sounds an amazing book. And as I've been reading through it, um, it is an amazing book. Why 1847? Well, I mean, that was just um, a, a very important date, I think, you know, for Turtle. And as I said, we'll have him on the programme talking about it at some stage. But well, so um, just to kind of give the listeners, you know, an insight into what it is, it's 36 stories from from around the world that capture the spirit of the age. So um, in, in that sense, it's bursting, as it says here, with all manner of human life and endeavour <laughs> and um, embraces oh, the tales of the intrepid explorers who charted the Americas to show stopping entertainers like Lola Montez and General Tom Thumb. So she was a girl, Lola Montez. My word, what a woman she was! Oh well, there you she go. She was Irish. Well, you know the best, the best, the best women are. But um, so the the famine as well. I'll he has that. that about <laughs> Irish. You know the. The, the Irish that were persecuted German immigrants, uh, Ivory um, Tinkling Genius of Litz and Mendelssohn and to the horsebound Comanche warriors who dominated the Texan plains. So so it's a huge variety in this particular book and I suppose there's so many aspects to the book and listeners are, are interested in having it at some stage but I suppose one that can connect us to, to what we're, we're doing um, here in relation to Ireland um, was the Choctaw Nation and the Indians and the their contribution that they made and the amazing contribution that they made around the time of the Irish famine, which is which was all, all going on in 1847. 1847 right? and um, 100, albeit 170 years ago. And, you know, I suppose when I was talking to Turtle Bunbury, I suppose he, he it was a very interesting take that he had on history. And I loved it that if we sort of look at 170 years ago, we think, oh, my goodness, that's ages ago. But actually, it really isn't. And, you know, as a sport of why would you take, um, you know, my, my mother sort of who passed in her in her 90s. And so I was to sort of then go back into somebody, you know, another... 90 years before. It's two of her Well, then lifetimes. that's two of my, just of my mother's lifetime. So actually it's very recent. And um, so the, the take up for, for the, um, the Choctaw Indians, I suppose there was um, an Irish Relief um, Committee, General Irish Relief Committee of, um, in the city of New York. And the Choctaw tribe of Indians in the far west, they regarded as the most remarkable. And so the contribution, I think, was $170, as it says here, a sum. It was lo the largest part was contributed by the children of the forest, a red brethren of the Choctaw Nation. And even those men uh, that felt the force of Christian example, they said at the time. But so, so you know, so there was that connection. And I think there's a, memor um, a commemoration statue down in Middleton to the Choctaw Indians in relation to that relief fund for the famine. So, so it's all here in um, Turtle bon Bonbury's wonderful book, again, uh, 1847, A Chronicle of Genius, Generosity and Savagery. And it's, it is well worth um, having a read because, and again, it's interesting. I mean, I think, you know, in a hundred odd years time, who's going to be writing about 2016? Will somebody take that year, you know, a year in in the world and actually talk about all of the issues and all of the events and all of the, you know, particular people that were involved, that were coming to the fore. And so if we take about that, we're making history as we sit here. Of course. And so, you know, this time, this moment in time is incredibly important. And I suppose when I was looking at that and I thought, well, that's just a date. That's just a year, 1847. Now 2016 is. So what would we be writing? 
what would we be saying? What would we like to read back on if we were sort of fly on the wall in the wall 100 or 170 years further on from here? What would we what would we be proud of? What would we be horribly ashamed of? <laughs> what would we be cringing about in the corner? Um, and well, what think, would think, we uh, what legacy in the end of the day would we have left our children and our grandchildren? And our generations to come. So I think when you take books like this and, you know, historians have a magic about them, like Turtle Bunbury have a magic about them that bring it into the everyday life of people. And isn't that what history is all about? Yeah, I think I know what I'd be ashamed of. I I think I'd probably be ashamed of the way we the way we treat uh, refugees, the way we treat people who are a different color, a different faith a different culture, the fact that we we were just talking off air that, that we, the, the Irish particularly, are a nation that spread across the world, many times not welcomed, but have been absorbed into cultures and civilizations and have enhanced those cultures. And, and I imagine that there's a, some young Syrian refugee, nine or ten years old, that one day may win the Nobel Peace Prize, may well win a prize for medicine, may well represent Ireland um, in the World Cup. Absolutely. These things are still to happen. And yes, the Irish are a a race of immigrants and emigrants. And I too, um, I'm not Irish. My, my, My family... Probably in around the 1840s, the first members of my family started um, fleeing East Europe to find a home sort of elsewhere in the world. So I think that makes me a double immigrant, really, (laughs) because they fled. And then I didn't actually flee England, (laughs) but I, I moved away and I'd be made welcome. We have to be made welcome and we have to welcome people. They can enhance our society. Oh, absolutely. And I suppose, you know, closer to home and, you know, I know other shows will cover covers here on, on TCR, but, you know, we have direct provision. We have all of those things happening as we speak um, and, and, and as we go about our day every day. And I suppose it's very um, easy because I suppose we have now such a reach with media that we can become desensitized to what's happening and um, you know that we, we're, we're seeing it every day and the sad thing about us humans we, we tend to adjust and adapt very quickly to something that we're seeing all the time and we think oh it's just that again <laughs> you know and if it isn't directly affecting our lives we tend to say oh well okay I can put that aside but the, but the reality is, is that that is happening happening in the world and is happening in the world in view it is happening on our watch we we see it and 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 we and we see it all the time so you know there are just some thoughts um for us all to reflect on uh and um you know to to maybe let those seeds fall and to see what you think about it what do you think what do you the people out there what you listeners because you're the people that make all of our shows and our programs real